Yes, frozen meatballs are great in a pinch, but they simply don't compare to homemade meatballs. I'm showing you how easily you can make restaurant quality Italian meatballs with a gluten-free option. And all you need are a few simple ingredients including ground beef and pork, egg, almond flour or breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, and a few simple seasonings. Then I'll show you my favorite method for cooking perfectly juicy meatballs in nine minutes in an air fryer. But I'll also include instructions for pan seared or oven baked. In a mixing bowl, we're gonna start by adding our wet ingredients, which includes one egg, as our binder, half a cup of milk, and you can use regular or almond milk. And one of my favorite ingredients for really enhancing the flavor of the meat is one tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. I've been practicing that word all morning. And then we'll simply whisk these together until our egg is well combined. Now we'll add our dry ingredients and you could use your favorite Italian breadcrumbs or panko crumbs, or to make it gluten-free, you can use almond flour. So I'm adding two thirds of a cup of almond flour. Then we'll add one tablespoon of Italian seasoning, one tablespoon of dried parsley, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of paprika. You could also substitute this for red pepper flakes if you like a little more kick. One teaspoon salt and half a teaspoon pepper. To add garlic flavor to our meatballs, you could use garlic powder if that's all you have on hand, but I highly recommend going with fresh garlic. So I'm going to add three cloves of fresh garlic and I'm just using my garlic press, which makes it real quick and easy. My kitchen is starting to smell very Italian, which is one of my favorite parts of making these meatballs. And then we'll whisk these ingredients together until well combined. And the consistency will become similar to a pancake batter. Now we can add our meat and you could use any variety of ground beef that you'd like. My preference is to use ground chuck. So I'm gonna add one pound of meat. And then to enhance those distinctive Italian flavors, I'm gonna go ahead and add half of a pound of some ground sausage. And this is just country pork sausage. And then last but not least, we can add our Parmesan cheese, which is going to add even more flavor as well as moisture. Now you could buy the pre-shredded Parmesan cheese, but it's been coated in cellulose, which keeps those little cheese strands from sticking together. So I prefer to just buy the block of Parmesan cheese and then grate it myself. And I just use my zesting grater to get a really nice fine shred. So I'm just going to add about a third a cup of Parmesan cheese. And then the easiest way to mix this all together is to use your hands. So you will want to remove any jewelry first, but then you can just go in and with your fingers and just moosh all those ingredients together. And yes, this is hashtag satisfying. And you don't want to overmix it. You just wanna go until it looks like all those ingredients are evenly distributed throughout the meat. So squishing it between your fingers helps to ensure that your two different meats get incorporated. And then once it's mixed, you can go ahead and just kind of pat it down into the bowl. To form the meatballs, I found it's quickest to use a cookie scoop. So I'm just gonna scoop out a level scoop of my mixture and then drop it right here into this pan. And I'm just gonna do this very quickly just to get them all evenly portioned. And this will ensure that all the meatballs are the same size, which helps them cook evenly. Now that they're all scooped, you want to go ahead and just get a little bit of water on the palms of your hands, and then you'll quickly go through, take one at a time, kind of squeeze it down, and then roll it into a nicely shaped ball. Again, this is very hashtag satisfying. Now that our meatballs are all rolled, you have three options for cooking them. First, you can bake them in your oven at 400 degrees for about 18 to 20 minutes. You could spread out a piece of parchment paper or put your baking rack on top of your baking sheet and then put your meatballs on top, leaving about a half of an inch around each of the meatballs. You'll want to use a meat thermometer to check the internal temperature to make sure that it's at least 160 degrees. You don't want to go too far over that or else your meatballs will become dry. The second method for cooking them is in a cast iron frying pan. You'll want to bring the pan to high heat and then pour in a little bit of olive oil. And then you place your meatballs inside your pan, leaving about a half inch in between. And you allow them to cook for a couple minutes on each side until they're brown all the way around. And then you'll want to check their internal temperature. And as soon as it reaches 160 to 165 degrees, your meatballs are done and they can be removed from your pan. My favorite method for cooking the meatballs is in my air fryer, just because of how quick and convenient it is. Now you'll want to start by spraying the inside of your basket or your tray with some nonstick spray, but you'll want to make sure your spray does not include any propellants, which could damage the inside of your air fryer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray my tray right over my meatballs, and then lower this back into my basket. Then you'll want to simply start filling it with your meatballs and you'll want to place them about a half inch apart from each other inside your air fryer so that they have lots of room for that air to circulate around them. 
and the capacity of your air fryer will determine how many meatballs you can fit inside. It looks like mine can comfortably accommodate about 25. Next, you'll want to coat the outside of your meatballs with a little bit of olive oil, which will help them brown while they're cooking. You could do this by dipping a pastry brush into your oil and then just brushing the tops of the meatballs, or you can use an olive oil spray. So I'm just gonna go through and lightly spray the tops of each of the meatballs. Well, those look great. If your meatballs are a little on the smaller side, then you can cook them at 380 degrees for eight minutes. Or if your meatballs are a little bit on the larger size, like mine are, go ahead and cook it at 380 degrees for 10 minutes. So I'll just set my air fryer for 380 degrees and then set the timer for 10 minutes and hit start. And then halfway through, you'll want to open your basket, roll your meatballs around, and then close the basket and let them continue cooking. Well, my air fryer just beeped at me, letting me know that it's time to open it up and shake the meatballs. Oh my goodness, those look so good. So I'm just gonna take a pair of tongs and move those around. And they are ready to finish cooking. Well, my air fryer just beeped at me, letting me know that the meatballs are done. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Oh, those look so good. But the first thing we want to do is to check the internal temperature. So I'm gonna use a meat thermometer and just poke it inside of a meatball and make sure, ooh, we're at 165. So these meatballs are fully cooked and ready to come out. Now, if the internal temperature is below 160, go ahead and just set it for about another minute at a time. Keep checking the temperature until it gets up to 160. And then I'll just empty them out onto a plate that's been lined with a paper towel. So I want the meatballs to come out, but all the extra oil to stay inside. Well, those smell so good. And you can see the inside the air fryer, it got a nice little dark crispy edge on the outside. Well, let's go ahead and open one of these guys up. Ooh, but look how moist and juicy that is on the inside. So just like any meat, you'll want to let these rest for about 10 to 15 minutes, which allows those juices to just soak right back up into that meat. Now you could enjoy these meatballs as is, or you could transfer them to a pan of marinara sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add these to my sauce. Now you could make your own marinara sauce, but I have found there are so many delicious organic brands available at the grocery store that it's really convenient to just keep a few of these in your pantry to pull out whenever you need them. Like this one in particular doesn't have any added sugar or preservatives and I think tastes absolutely delicious. So once the meatballs are in my pan, I'm just going to coat them in the marinara sauce and then I'll move this pan onto my stove top, set the heat to medium, and then let that sauce get nice and bubbly. And that's just going to infuse those meatballs with even more delicious Italian flavor. Well, these meatballs have been simmering in the sauce for about 10 to 15 minutes on my stove. And oh, they smell and look absolutely incredible. My favorite way to enjoy these meatballs in the marinara sauce is over spaghetti squash. But first I want to chop a little bit of fresh basil. So I'm just gonna take a few leaves here, roll them up nice and tight, take my knife, and then just make some very thin little cuts and then cut them crosswise. So I'm gonna scoop up a few of these meatballs. Oh my goodness. Make sure I get a little bit of extra sauce, add some Parmesan cheese and a few little sprinkles of fresh basil. Okay, it's ready now and so am I. Make sure it's not too hot. That is incredible. Wow. That is an explosion of incredible Italian flavors. And then I bite into the meatball that's just lightly crisp on the outside, but then it's just soft and juicy on the inside. And having the mix of pork sausage just brings even more flavor. And then I get just the right amount of spice from the pepper and from the Worcestershire sauce and from the fresh garlic. And it just leaves the most delicious aftertaste. And I love that subtle nutty flavor that comes in from the almond flour, which I would enjoy even if I didn't have to avoid gluten. That tastes as delicious as any meatballs that I've ever had in a restaurant. And it's even more satisfying knowing that I made them in my own kitchen. And once you've cooked all your meatballs, you could easily freeze them and then just pull them out as needed. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my Italian kitchen. And I've included a link in the video description below to the full recipe, which is also available on my website, gentletummy.com. And I also invite you to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you know someone else who you think would love this recipe, please share this video with them. And I cannot wait to have you hang out with me again in my kitchen next time.